Hi! Assets are an important part of Loot Locker. They can take your game to the next level. But what are they and how do you use them? This video will give you a good overview to help you get on the front foot with all things assets. I am Johannes and this is Learn with Loot Locker. In simple terms, an asset is an item you can connect to a player. Something they can earn, buy or just have. So that's things like weapons, treasure chests or currency, for example. Players store assets in their inventories, but they're not always tangible items. A respawn point counts as an asset, for example. That means that they can also be things that your game reads but the player doesn't know exist. We've designed loot lockers assets so you can use them for lots of different things. Think of each one as an empty shell you can fill with data to give it meaning and purpose. And while they're easy to set up and use straight out of the box, we also offer lots of customization options. So whatever your game needs, there's an asset for that. We'll now go through the structure of an asset and how they can be used in your game. When you create an asset, you need to give it a context. This is a way to group and describe assets. It lets your game know what type of asset it is and tells Loot Locker what sort of information or logic you'll be storing in it, along with how it should behave. When you create a context, you can decide what character classes should be able to equip this context. For example, a warrior might not be able to equip a magic wand. We'll go more into details on characters and classes in another video. Every context on an asset has a complexity. The complexity, as the name implies, makes the asset more complex by adding additional logic to it. Loot Locker comes with seven built-in types of complexities. The generic complexity is the basic context. It doesn't add anything extra and will probably work fine for generic items such as non-customizable equipment items that you want to give the player or remote game configs. Customization lets you store different appearances of the same asset. For example, a hat asset might have the same model but different colors. This complexity lets you store that information in the same asset, so you don't have to create a red hat asset, a green hat asset and a blue hat asset and crowd your database with loads of the same hat. An asset package can be used if you want one asset to contain multiple other assets. So if you want to reward players with lots of assets in one go, you can create a package that contains a bundle of them. The loot box complexity adds logic for random weighted rewards. You give groups of assets different weights that make them more or less rare. When a player opens up a loot box in your game, Loot Locker chooses a reward based on the weighting you've given it. Similar to the loot box complexity, Drop Table lets you select how many items to drop from each group. So when players defeat a boss for example, you can use this complexity to make it drop a certain number of random items with different rarities, like 4 common items, 2 epic ones and 3 rare ones. You can also set how many assets a player can choose from the ones that dropped. Rentals are assets player can own and activate for a specific amount of time. For example, a rental could be an item that lets them collect double XP for 15 minutes after they activate it. Each rental asset can also have multiple tiers of time limits, so you won't overpopulate your content database with similar assets. Virtual currency is Loot Locker's automatic currency system. Unlike other complexities, you don't actually manage it, but instead use our specific interface for it. This lets you add sub-denominations and even exchange rates between other currencies, and create packs of soft currencies to sell. We'll go through each one of these complexities in more detail in future videos. For now, let's continue with the basics of assets. When you want to create an asset in Loot Locker, you first need to create a context. So we go to Settings, Context and we'll create a generic asset context. We'll go more into detail on how context works in another video, so for now let's just stick with the generic asset. Now that we've created a context, we can create an asset. So we go to Content and then Assets and then click Add Asset. This will let you give a name to your asset and assign it with the context. All assets come with default data regardless of what context they use and those are basic information, platform properties, filters and storage, and technical details. We'll now look at each one of these and see what they are used for. Here is an asset called Warrior Helmet that's using a context called Warrior Hats that is using the complexity generic assets. So it is a simple item that the player can equip and unequip. 
We first have the basic information tab. Here we can see the name of the asset, the ID, when it was last changed, the price and price when on a discount. We have a few checkboxes that can be used to enable certain features for the asset. Universal assets are in all players inventory for a specific time period, but it will stay there for good if they equip it while they have access. This can be used for giving players an opportunity to claim a special item during an event for example. Purchasable makes the item possible to purchase. Without this enabled, the item must be given to the player by triggers inside of other assets like loot boxes and packages or manually gifted. Featured puts the asset in a specific list that you can retrieve from Loot Locker. So if you for example have a new weapon available, you can check this to be able to filter it on the game client and show the newly available weapon for the user. Unique instance will make it so that the user can only own one of these assets. If you for example have a legendary sword in your game, you might want your players to only be able to own one of these items. Next we have Rarity. Rarity can be used to decide what rarities items have. Each rarity can have a distinct color, which you then can use in your game to show the user what rarity type the asset has. There is a link for more information about asset rarity in the description. Next we have Platform Properties. This page is for when you want to integrate other first party platforms with your asset. If you for example want your asset to be linked to something that you can buy on Google Play or PlayStation Network, you enter the product ID from that platform here, and you can then use that information to check if the player bought an item on that platform. Then we have the Filters and Storage tab. Filters can be used to filter the assets in the UI or in game. If you for example want to see just hats, you can add a filter to just view those assets. Key value storage can be used to store data on the asset. You could for example do as I've done here and store the defense of the asset in a key value. Key values will store information as strings, so you can use this to store any type of data that you want. Then we have files. Every asset can have multiple files that can be retrieved by the player. You could for example use this to save all data for an equipable asset and then have the game construct the item from the information it gets from Loot Locker. By doing this you could make it possible to add new items to your game without needing to make new versions of your game every time. Then we have data entities. Much as key values, this can be used for storing information to be read by your game. Data entities have less limits on storage, so it can be used when you need to store more information that the key values cannot fit, such as a configuration file or a level 5. Next we'll look at technical details. Technical details of your asset contains the asset context, in case you need to change it, as well as minimum supported game version. The minimum supported game version you define is the first version of the game that can support this asset. Older game versions will not receive this asset. If no version is set, this asset will be sent to the game regardless of game version. Game versions are populated by your game during the authentication request. This was an overview of a generic asset in Loot Locker. Whenever you make a change to an asset, make sure to click save to not lose any changes that you made to it and activate the asset so you can use it in your game. Alright, we now have an understanding of how an asset works, so how would the player retrieve assets then? Loot Locker supports many different ways to grant a player an asset. Through game systems, like progressions and triggers, through other assets like drop tables and loot boxes, or by manually gifting the asset through the Loot Locker dashboard. Here are some examples. A trigger can be called from in-game and will reward the player with whatever reward you have included in the trigger. Here I have a trigger called Get Loot Box. The player can use this trigger as many times as they want and it will reward the player with an asset called Standard Chest, which uses the loot box complexity. We will dive deeper into the loot box complexity in another video. A trigger can be configured to be possible to call unlimited times or a set amount of times. If you for example want to be able to give all players a free loot box, you can specify so that they can only get one loot box with that trigger. There is also a grant all checkbox. Checking this will reward the player with all the items in the trigger. If it is unticked, an item will be chosen at random from the available rewards instead. Another way to grant an asset to a player is with another asset, like a loot box. Here is the loot box and as you can see it has a bunch of assets set up as possible rewards. Once activated in game, Loot Locker will select a random reward based on the rarity weights of each group. The final way of giving your player assets is through the player manager on the dashboard. 
This can for example be used if one of your players won a contest and you want to gift them a special asset, or if something went wrong with in-app purchases, then you can gift them the asset to make sure that they get the item that they bought. It's also possible to use a segment to find players that fit a certain criteria, like players that were active during a specific time. This could be used if you want to reward early adopters in your game and give all of them a unique skin, for example. Alright, that was an introduction to how assets in Loot Locker works. Assets are one of the core concepts that Loot Locker uses, so making sure that you understand how they work is a great way to streamline the process of implementing them in your game. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and to not miss out on any new content, make sure to subscribe. If you have any questions, want to chat with us, or just want to show off your game, you should join our Discord. Link is in the description. Alright, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.